On this episode of Blue Zoo TV presented by Hikari, Charles Delbake takes us deep into the 212,000 gallon Philippine coral reef tank. Plus, we'll take a look at how the Steinhardt Aquarium lights this massive display. Charles, explain this massive window in front of us and this massive tank. What's in it? Well, this is our Philippine coral reef. It's the largest indoor living coral reef exhibit in the world. It's about 212,000 gallons, wow. and it represents the Philippines. When you say Philippines, for people that are watching this, every species, all the coral are from the Philippines. That's correct. They're either from the Philippines or they're species that are found in the Philippines because obviously we can't collect a lot of the corals from the Philippines because it's illegal to collect and export coral unless you have the proper permits. And one of the things that we're really proud of is that over 90% of the corals in this tank are either from donations from local hobbyists, exchanges with other public aquariums, or some confiscations from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So we haven't gone out and collected or bought any corals at all. You know, one of the things that's always been said about a, a reef tank in general is that, is that it takes time to grow. Nothing happens in a reef tank overnight. So Only when you, bad things happen. Bad things. Yeah. So when you're laying out a, a big tank like this, are you looking you know, two, three years down the road of how the coral should look? I'm looking more like five to ten years down the road. Um, there's a team of uh, biologists that work on this exhibit, Richard Ross, Matt Wandell, Marisa Avila, myself, and uh, Bart Shepard, our director, is also involved. And uh, it's an ongoing project, and it's, it's in its infancy right now. It's only about three years old, and we think that it's really going to start kicking in around five years, and then by ten years, it's going to look like a, a natural coral reef. When the hobbyist gets a tank at their home, and they get maybe a 55 or a 90, and then one day they're like, wow, I should have went with 120 or 150. You ever fall into that with opposite. a 212? I have the opposite. I wish it was 112 instead of 212. It'd be a little bit easier to maintain it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of water to maintain uh, at reef parameters, you know, calcium, alkalinity, phosphate, nitrate, all those things we're trying to do on a huge scale that hobbyists are doing on a much smaller scale. Is it possible for these fish in this environment are you looking for them to breed at all? Um, there definitely are breeding. I mean, we have a lot of pelagic spawners in here, a lot of anthias, surgeon fish, tangs, uh, pygmy angel fish, and they're all breeding in here. We have clownfish and damsels that are nesting, producing eggs. So we're getting a lot of uh, breeding going on, but not a lot of recruitment because, as you, most people will know, it takes a uh, very concerted effort to raise these fish, and you have to have the special foods and all those kinds of things. When somebody is getting into the, the marine or saltwater fish hobby for the first time, and they want to start talking about adding corals, um, give everybody an idea of, they have to give space to these animals because they're going to grow for the most part, right? That's right. That's correct. Because uh, if you're successful, which most people uh, hope to be, is that these corals are going to grow. So you start off with small pieces, they adapt to your environment, and then they start growing. More with Charles, Blue Zoo TV, presented by Hikari. We're here with Chris Cleavers from Hikari. Chris, clear up some of the issues with feeding marine fish and how you guys at Hikari go about it. Well, one of the things we've really concentrated on heavily is the texture of the foods that we make for marine fish. So we've got products that when they get in the water, they become very much like a sponge or a pancake consistency. So it's something that the fish instinctually would find, uh, would be grazing on in the wild. It's got the similar texture. So we've got a number of different options for marine hobbyists to use, from Marine S for smaller saltwater fish, to Marine A for the larger specimens, and then our newest addition, which is Seaweed Extreme. And it's a product that will allow the marine hobbyists to eliminate uh, the use of uh, nori algae strips. It's a highly concentrated uh, pellet with two-thirds of the composition made up of natural algaes. So for the marine herbivores, it's an ideal diet. To find out more about the great Akari products, Go to AkariUSA.com. Well, Charles, we're looking above the 212,000 gallon tank, correct? That's correct. Talk to us a little bit about water movement and all the lights that you have, because I guess with the tank being so deep, 22 feet? Yeah, you, 22 it, feet the it deepest, yeah. probably has some challenges. It does. It, it definitely does have some challenges. And uh, it was a struggle just originally to figure out where to put all the lighting. And originally it was supposed to be much higher up, and we were supposed to have 2,000 watt metal halides and uh, we had some issues with the fixtures not working properly from, from Europe, so we had to go to 1,000 watts, which meant we had to drop. So we had this whole catwalk that we dropped right down as close as we could to the surface. And we also made use of the uh, planetarium eyebrow, 
to uh, put more lights up there. So we have about 86, 1,000 watt metal halides on here. And uh, it's been a challenge. And, and we have some issues with the bulbs prematurely going out and we have to replace them. And believe it or not, in some areas, it's, there's too much light. And then we, as you can see, like on day like today, we've got natural sunlight. And that's also by design. But we knew that we couldn't rely on natural daylight, that we had to have this artificial lighting. So for lighting, it almost sounds like it's still uh, an everyday challenge to keep up with it, to make sure that the light bulbs are all doing that, what they're supposed to be doing. That they're all doing what they're supposed to be doing and, and hopefully not doing what they're, we don't want them to do or doing what they don't want them to do, like burn the corals or whatever. So we've changed some of the reflectors. Some of them are more narrow beam, some are wider beam. We've gone to a wider beam reflector. We've aimed the lights so, so we know where exactly the light's going to go. One of the things that stands out, other than the coral, which we'll get to in a second, is the, the water movement. It looks like you really have the water moving, and it's not just because you have a diver in there right now feeding, right? I mean, right now, quick. actually, the water motion has been uh, dialed back a little bit. We actually have uh, three 40 horsepower pumps, and they're, they all go into a common manifold, which then feeds water into five different zones. And each of those zones has a butterfly valve that's computer controlled. So we have a whole program set up where we have some of the water going one direction part of the day and then the other direction, another part of the day, and then all over the tank, along the surface, along the bottom. So we mix it all up and uh, we increase the strength from 100% output to down to zero output and everything in between. So we have a lot of uh, programs and uh, Richard Ross, one of our aquatic biologists, has been uh, spearheading that whole movement and developing that whole water motion regime. We're still not completely happy with it, but it, it's working to a certain extent, but uh, we're always looking to improve it. Cordon's Novaqua Plus detoxifies chlorine and toxic metals while adding a protective skin slime coating, echinacea, and natural electrolytes and vitamins. Cordon's superior water conditioning products help make fish keeping easy. Visit Cordon.com and check out the entire line of products and ask for Cordon products at your favorite store. Cordon, trusted solutions since 1961. Frustrated with your cloudy aquarium? Want a simple, easy-to-use solution for clear, clean, healthy, odor-free water? You need EcoBioBlock. EcoBioBlock's unique beneficial bacteria live and multiply in volcanic rock for up to two years, reducing the need for maintenance and water changes. EcoBioBlock in every aquarium for clear water, healthy fish. Give us a call or go online to ecobioblock.com. Tunzi has been the world leader in high-tech aquarium ecology for over 50 years. Tunzi products promote natural water conditions and movement in the closed environment of an aquarium. Find filter systems, circulation pumps, wave generators, and much more at Tunzi.com. On our next episode, we're galloping backstage for a look at some rare seahorses, and Charles shows us how they keep their exhibits clean. To learn more about the show or to email us, go to bluezootv.com.